Greetings, this is David Davis, and this demo is on configuring VMware's Distributed Resource Scheduler, or DRS, from my new VMware vSphere Performance Monitoring Video Training course. Now let's move on to configuring DRS. Before you do that, you need to make sure that your version of vSphere supports it. That would be either vSphere Enterprise or Enterprise Plus. You need to ensure that you have shared storage so that all virtual machines can be stored on that shared storage and all ESX and ESXi servers can access the shared storage. That way DRS can use vMotion to move virtual machines from one ESX host to another. The basic process is to create a new cluster and enable DRS on the cluster and then add your servers to the cluster and then of course the running virtual machines on those servers will come along with them. You'll need to test vMotioning between the ESX hosts on that cluster to ensure that you've met all the requirements and that vMotion is compatible from one host to another. Once DRS is enabled, you should be able to sit back and watch for DRS to take action using vMotion to move virtual machines to a host that has the resources needed for that virtual machine. Additionally, if you have an existing cluster, let's say you have a VMHA cluster, you can go into the cluster settings and just check the checkbox there that says turn on VMware DRS to make that a DRS enabled cluster. So with that, let's go over to our vSphere client and start creating our DRS cluster. Here in my vSphere client, before I show you how to configure DRS, let me first give you an overview of what I have. Starting off with ESX server number one here, you can see that it has a number of powered off virtual machines and then it has three virtual machines that are powered on. On the right hand side here under resources, you can see that this ESX host is very heavily loaded. It's utilizing about 7,000 megahertz out of 8,000 megahertz and about 7.5 gigs of RAM out of about 8 gigs of RAM. So this host is almost maxed out on CPU and RAM just from these three virtual machines alone. I also have another ESX server here, ESX server number three, that's actually an identical physical server. It has the same amount of CPU and same amount of RAM. But as you can tell, it has no virtual machines and virtually no load on the server at all. So what I should be able to do here is to help out ESX server number one by creating a DRS cluster and then balancing the load of these virtual machines across the two hosts. So to do that, the first thing I'll do is just right click on my data center and I'll go to new cluster. And this brings up the new cluster wizard. So first I need to give the cluster a name. I'll just call it production. And then I need to select what features I want to be enabled on this cluster. So I can choose from VMHA and VMware DRS. Now typically people enable both of these together, but in this case I'm just going to enable DRS because I don't want to complicate the demonstration any further. But like I said, most production environments use both HA and DRS together. So we've got DRS enabled, I'll say next here. And then I need to choose the automation level. So a quick overview here, if you haven't used the automation level before, the manual automation level just means that basically DRS isn't going to move any virtual machines. It's just going to make some suggestions for you in the vSphere client, and then you can take action from there. Then there's partial automation, which would mean that virtual machines will be automatically placed on hosts when they're powered on, but vCenter won't automatically move virtual machines once the virtual machines have been powered on. It'll make suggestions and then it'll be up to you to move those virtual machines. Now most people out there, I would say 99% or more, use DRS in a fully automated way. Fully automated means that DRS will automatically place virtual machines when they're powered on and it will also automatically move virtual machines from one ESX host to another to ensure that that virtual machine is getting the resources that it needs. And then there's this migration threshold here. So the migration threshold ranges all the way from conservative, which means that it will only move virtual machines if it's really important. And really for only things like to fulfill affinity rules or for host maintenance. And then you can move the slider all the way to the right and there's various levels in between here. And then on the right hand side we have aggressive. With aggressive DRS will move virtual machines from one ESX host to another, even if only to gain the slightest performance improvement. And to be honest, most people leave it somewhere in the middle in really the default position in a balanced state. Now to make sure that my demonstration of DRS goes well here and happens as quickly as possible, I'm going to move this all the way over to the aggressive mode to ensure that virtual machines are moved quickly so that you can see DRS in action. But like I said, most people leave it somewhere in the center 
in its default position. This subsection of DRS is about power management, which is DPM, or Distributed Power Management, and I've got a whole separate lesson in this course on using DPM, so I'm going to skip DPM right now and just take the default of leaving it off. And here it's asking if I want to enable EVC, or Enhanced V-Motion Compatibility, and I've got a whole separate section on EVC in the next lesson in this course, so I'll take the default and leave it disabled. I'll click Next here. We'll opt to store the swap file for each virtual machine in the same directory as the virtual machine, which is highly recommended to do. I'll click Next, and we're ready to create our new DRS cluster. I'll click Finish there. And you can see the new DRS cluster has been created up here called Production. Now to move ESX servers into the Production DRS cluster, all I have to do is click them, hold down my mouse, drag them over, and drop them into the DRS cluster. If you have any resource pools on local ESX servers, you need to take uh, this question seriously into account. Now, because the new DRS cluster will have its own default resource pool, when you move an ESX server and virtual machines into the cluster, you're placing them in that resource pool by default. Then from there, you can create sub or child resource pools. So generally, the default option is fine right here. But if you do have resource pools already existing on that ESX server, then you may want to offer the second choice on this screen that would preserve that ESX server's resource pool hierarchy. I'll click Next here and Finish. Let's expand out the DRS cluster. You can see here that ESX server number one, its virtual machines, including the running virtual machines, are now in place in the new DRS cluster. Now we can add ESX server number three. That's the server that has no virtual machines. And once it's in place, DRS should be moving some of those running virtual machines over to ESX server number three to help ensure that they all get the resources that they need. So I'll click on ESX server number three, drag it over, and drop it in the DRS cluster. Again, we have the same questions here. I'll just click Next and Finish. ESX server number three is in place. I'll go to the DRS cluster here. I'll click on the DRS tab, and let's click on History here because this history screen underneath the DRS tab is going to show us any actions that DRS has taken. Now DRS is very pragmatic even when the migration threshold is set to aggressive. So to get this to happen even faster I'm just going to click run DRS right here and immediately two virtual machines were migrated from ESX server number one to ESX server number three. So now if I click on the virtual machines tab here we can see that some of the virtual machines are on ESX server number one, but there's two virtual machines now on ESX server number three. Let's go to ESX server number three specifically and verify this. We can see the uh, utilization really on ESX host number three is really bumped up with the addition of these two new virtual machines that have been added. Let's look at ESX server number one. Over here on ESX host number one, we can now see that the memory and CPU utilization have significantly dropped once those two virtual machines were migrated over to the new ESX host that's now in place in the cluster. If we go to the cluster level now, and back to the DRS tab, we can go to the recommendations screen here. We can see that we're set to fully automated, and our migration threshold is aggressive, which is apply all recommendations. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.